tired. What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a phenomenal night. We're almost there to the weekend. The Scoop and Merryweather show is back. I know we missed last week. People were outraged. Brandon, I, I guess, you know, a good way to start off the show is what the hell has been happening in the past two weeks from your perspective? Because, man, I'll tell you what, this loss, I think, really put a lot of people down. Because no one expects to lose by 24 points to Duke. <sighs> to start off the conversation lightly, we trash. You know. You know, it ain't no way to put it. You know what I mean? It, it is what it is. You know, we are dog doodle. This might be the worst Miami Hurricane team I ever seen in my life. You know, and I'm not talking about talent wise. I'm not talking about coaching. I'm talking about as a combined unit. This might be the worst Miami team I ever seen. What even, I oh, go even ahead. when we was on probation. Yeah. Even when we was on probation, we was better than this. The thing that I find interesting, Brandon, and I. I want to hear your thoughts about this. Duke had a first-year head coach with Mike Elko as their head coach. This is a new staff. Traditionally at Miami, every year you should recruit better than Duke. You should have better players. When you bring in a new staff and they bring in a new staff and they beat you by 24 points, that's the thing that I'm, I don't understand. I know we had a lot of injuries, but still, how do we, I mean, literally just get blown out and commit eight turnovers? Well, well, to start off, to start off, we didn't. <clears throat> to start off, we do have better players. Like, we do have better players. Like, you put our quarterback up against their quarterback, you'll pick ours, you know. You pick, you know, you put our receiver up against there, you pick ours. You put our O-line against there, you pick ours. Like, regardless of how you want to look at it, we have better players. But, like, <laughs> like, it's hard. And you remember when we first started this, I said, I said, hey, man, listen. Y'all got to understand, Crystal Ball got to get his players in there. He got to get his players to go and get with his system and do all that. Remember I told you that? Yep. And the reason I was saying that is because of these, this. Like, that's the whole reason I was saying that. Like, you got, like, it, I have never in a in my life seen a Pop Warner team have eight turnovers. Like, that's ridiculous. Like, I have never in my life heard of anybody having eight turnovers. Now, I done heard of somebody throwing four interceptions. You know, I, it's like, it's like you can't buy, like you can't buy <laughs> somebody to actually go in and play good and continue to play good. 
And I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you another thing that that I see that I hate. We found one decent receiver. Yep. That'll catch the ball. We found one. But we forced him to ball 20 times a game. Like every quarterback that get in there throws to him. Like he had 13 targets. The next closest person had four. Like that's impossible, bro. That's impossible. Like you don't understand how hard that is. I, you know, there this offense, I think. Well, I think when TVD went back went down, to be honest, I think Josh Gad is panicked to start off. Because the run game wasn't working at all. It hasn't been there the whole year, basically, except for the Texas A&M game and early on against Bethune-Cookman or Southern Miss, if you want to count those games. I think Josh Gad is panicked. And I don't understand why we don't use the tight ends more. I say it every week. Mallory's been very successful lately. when He's been balling. He's been balling. Jaleel Skinner hasn't really seen the field too much. I think you got to play him, even if he makes mistakes. But when he was playing, he was balling. Yeah. And we have Romello Brinson, who I think can make an impact on this team. Number 80. The ball at all. Number 80. I think he's something like that. Yeah, I think I know who you're talking about. I haven't seen him on the field at all this year. No, I like him too. I like him too. But I just it's not even it's not even the tight ends. It's like (laughs) it's like we're playing, you know, checkers and everybody else is playing chess. It's like we have we first off, we have no dog in us. None. We have no dog in us. We never win one on one matchups. I'm going to tell you, I had a homeboy go down there, a former player go down there last week again for the Duke game. He was on the sideline, and he said, when Miami came out of the tunnels and warming up, he said he knew then we were going to get the brakes beat off us. <clears throat> Can you give us a hint? No, I, no I won't. He said, he said the energy – and the way they carry themselves, like he said, like it's it's nobody who's looking at Miami and saying, "Oh, this Miami." Like it's like people over there they talking junk to us now. Like Duke wouldn't have never opened their mouth when I was playing. Like we would have smacked Duke. Like yo, stop playing. Right. Like this is never like I have never in my life seen nothing like this. So who do you think is at fault? The past coaching staff for the players they've recruited is the coaching staff we have right now who's getting paid a lot of money. We put together a good staff this offseason. Mario's getting $8 million a year. Or is it the players themselves for not wanting to show up against teams? Because the week before, we had 18 penalties against Virginia Tech. This is another record I've never seen before either. This is what I think. I think it's a little bit of – all three. So, I think it's the players because I don't care what you call. Like, I'm going to use defense as a position because I play defense. Like, I don't care what you call. If I got more bark and bite than you, then I'm going to win, Period. Period. You know what I mean? Like, that's the problem. We do not have nobody that, even in a bad call, they'll make it out to look good. Like, like you know what my coach used to always say? As long as everybody on the same page, we okay. So we could have a worse defense called against the play you call it, but we're going to be okay because we all on the same page. And that's because we knew Oh, we knew one or two things. We had we had more dogs than everybody, or we was gonna be in the right call that played that got to play that defense. 
it seems like Mario, his post game comments. And I don't know if you if you saw this, Brandon. He said we're going to review the film, and if we see players giving up on tape, they're going to be pushed out of this program. And I think that tells me that Mario wants to clean house. He doesn't like the players he has right now in the program because he didn't. I mean, maybe he recruited some in high school, but. Basically, he hasn't had a full recruiting cycle at Miami. It's his first year. He came in late. Man, it don't matter. <laughs> it don't matter. It don't. Don't nobody care. Like, nobody cares. What I'm getting from this, though, Brandon, is that you basi- basically, from what I'm getting is that we're in deep shit as a program moving oh, forward. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, I'm going to tell you, let me let me tell you why last year team looked better than this year team. Last year team had for one had a a really good offensive coordinator that the team could rally behind. So even if you played like trash, you knew the offense eventually was going to score points. So the defense would, the defense, even if they were trash, they still was going to be playing hard because they knew that they would have a chance because TVD and the offense was going to score points. Right. That's the difference. This year, the defense giving up. Because when the offense make a couple turnovers, the defense give up. Like the perfect game, middle ten. Yep. The first the first drive of the game, we threw the interception touchdown. Yep. Second drive of the game, we threw that the pick the tip ball pick. Defense came on there, held them to ten point, holding held them to three points. Then they came right back out. The defense, the offense went three and out. The defense gave up. Next play, bomb. Like, that's what happens with this team. This team don't have that grit. Like, when I was in college, like, my last year in college, we had the 115th ranked offense, but our defense was top five. Right. Like, they don't have that. All right, you know what? Less, less dominate like like you, you coach shannon would have told us straight up against duke he would have told us this he said hey listen if we'll have six sacks you know three interceptions like you treat them like they bethune cookman that's how you you treat them like you playing flow mo that's how you're supposed to treat them all right listen y'all i want all dbs back here to have a pick I don't care what y'all got to do. Every DB back here have a pick, and they better not give up no pass over 15 yards, period. You give up a pass over 15 yards, you out. And we would have been doing that to ourselves. Like, let, let one of my homeboys would have gave up a pass over 15 yards to do. I'd have been like, hey, bro, you got to get out. Hey, bro, <laughs> you got to go. You giving, up, you giving up a pass on Duke? Come on, bro. Duke ain't got one player over there that'll get drafted. Do Come we, on, bro. Do we they have do uh, for this year's draft? Do we have any players you think that could get drafted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got a couple offensive linemen. We got a couple D linemen that, that get drafted. We I got Mesendor is our best player on the D line by far. Who? Who no. Ninety. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I know you're talking about the one who had the hey. The, yeah, I agree. I agree, but yeah, we got a couple of people. You know what I mean? The receiver, uh, 88, he'll get drafted. But the thing is, though, mark my words. Every player on this team that get drafted will do better in the NFL than they do in college. It happens every year for Miami. We so see you, it all the time. You know what that tell you? What? The coaching is fucking terrible. So let me ask you a question. 
you remember Sam Shields, right? Yes. He came in as a as a wide receiver out of high school, very talented high school prospect. Yeah. Last we're, year we're they switched him over to corner. Yeah. The NFL, he, he's playing in the secondary, and he he had a good NFL career. He did. He won the Super Bowl with the Packers. Nah, he came the year after they won the Super Bowl. Okay. Okay. But but yeah, he he was balling though. I like him a lot. He was balling. You know, and that's one of the many examples. KJ Osborne, he did well at Miami, but you know, he's he's hanging around the NFL. Barrios, I mean he's hanging around, he has a role, DJ Dallas, you know. But you're primarily you think coaching needs to to be upgraded. You think it, you're really you're putting some pressure on the coaching is what I'm getting at right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. And listen, listen, don't get me wrong. I love Mario. I personally think Mario is a great coach. But, like, don't get me wrong now. I'm not calling for Mario here and saying Mario need to be fired or anything like that. I, I, I Like I told y'all, it's going to take a year or two before we start getting to where we're supposed to. But what I am saying is this oh this uh gad has got to go like you're, granted, off, the, you're off the guy this bus i'm off of it like yeah, granted so. granted you ain't gotta have great players to have a, a good game plan like i have not seen i have not seen one miami game plan that i was like you know what <laughs> that was a good game plan like he put that together. I have not seen one yet. Fair. So that let me know. That let me know that at Michigan, he wasn't the call. He wasn't the calling play calling the plays. He wasn't. He wasn't the man at Michigan like everybody thought he was. Jim Harbaugh. Absolutely. Eighteen minutes in, we'll be right back with our new sponsor of the Scoop and Merriweather Show. Tired of the anxiety, crashes, and jitters while taking Adderall? Then you got to try Clary Gen Z. It is the new, safest, all-natural formula to increase, maintain, and restore energy levels on demand within just 30 minutes. You're going to be able to protect against memory decline, reduce overwhelming anxiety, boost energy levels without crashing, and elevate mood and drive. It is 100% vegan, organic. It has been seen on NBC News, Fox Business, USA Today, Clary Gen Z. It's the right alternative to focus at work, school, and in life. You got to try it. Link is in the description below. Got to try out Clary Gen Z. All right, we are back. Hey man, you know you can't see the link, right? On uh, on the ad. Yeah, you can't to see the. Fair, Charlie did tell me like two hours before the show to get it all set up. So. Yeah, I was just saying, like, you should just moved it up a little bit so you can see the link. You know, that's. Oh, all. okay. I, but, well, it's, it's the rough draft. It's the. Rough yeah, I, 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 I get it. I get it. But by the way, y'all, that stuff is amazing. <laughs> Straight up, like if you use Adderall or you need something for a look that's natural, that give you a look. Trust me, trust me. That go get it. I'm I, telling you. If I were Charlie, and maybe you can, you know, hook it up with Charlie. Why don't we get Clary Gen Z representing? You know, helping out the players for a game. <laughs> we might. <laughs> why not? It, that could work. Don't we make need to be on Clary Gen Z. You're right. We need to because Lord knows, Lord knows they uh they need it. Right now, I, I want to talk to you about Jalen Knighton real quick because I know you, you really like him as a football player. I do. The last four games, he's had three fumbles. He's not the same player he was we saw last year. I understand he had an injury to start the season. He's a lot slower. He's not as shifty. I mean, he's been dropping a lot of passes when they throw it to him. 
He's fumbling the football a ton in, in big situations in a game. What, what do you think's going on with Jalen Knight? Because this is not the season he expected or anyone else expected. Um, honestly, man, I can't, I can't tell you. I can't tell you. Like, I, like it's so much that could be going on with players. You know what I mean? Like, I can't tell you. Like, it, it could be, it could be mental. It could be personal. Like, it could be anything could affect your game. But right. I personally, I personally think he ain't the same player because he don't get the same touches. He was kind of he was basically the guy last year. Yeah, like like him and two, like and both of them got the ball at least ten times a game. Like now he he haven't got the ball ten times in one game this season. I agree. Well, they right. take him out after a mistake, really. Bumble, right, but lots of pass. This is this is the problem I have with it, right? Like he's not like like when you're a football player. You got to get in the rhythm. Like, no, regardless of what position, you got to get in the rhythm. If you can't get in the rhythm, then, hey, if you can't get in the rhythm, then you're going to keep, you're going to keep having mistakes. Cause it's like practice. It's like, it's like practice all over again. That's why. That's so. Only person who I've seen getting in the rhythm is 21 out of that backfield. 21 getting the rhythm. And he been looking trash the last two games, two, three games. I think as well it has to do with our offensive line because it's it's not good at all. I, 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 just, I think it got everything to do with the scheme. So you you think it's Josh Gaddis' offense that's holding it back per se. I, I would rather see us go – well, I like us going empty set. I like going no huddle at times and up tempo. I think that's where well Tyler Van Dyke's injured, but I think that's where our offense runs the best that I've seen this season. We get more into the I you know what? I could agree with that for the most part. But you gotta you gotta be able to run the ball. Like you gotta be able to give you got to be able to the the line up in sure. third and one and get the run and run the ball when people know it. Right. We can't do that. I agree. Short yardage situation we're awful. We are horrendous in the red zone, short yardage situation. See, this is this is if 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 I was a coach, if I was a coach, I would always have have it to wear Guys can line up and get the one yard. I don't give a listen. I don't care how you want to look at it. We gonna practice that. We gonna line up and we gonna stop the one yard or we gonna get the one yard. I agree. That Franklin is a player I haven't seen in that situation a lot, and I don't know why we went away from him. We went to, to is his name, Lucius Luscious Stanley. He's a walk. Yeah. He basically came in as a walk-on from UAB. You know, he's not great. He's not good. I mean, he's just an average player, in my opinion. But we, we kind of went away from Thad Franklin. And he, he, ain't fumbled, he haven't fumbled or anything. No. And I don't get it either. Like, like it's nothing. That's what I'm saying. And that ain't no Mario. Mario ain't saying, hey, play him, play him, play him. That ain't no Mario. I know we're going to get Restrepo. Cheney's eventually going to come back, and hopefully in a couple weeks we'll get everyone back to normal. We still haven't seen a complete game from our offense where we're running the ball great. We've seen 500 passing yards. I think that's a good way to say, hey, you know, throwing the football, you've done well. But we still haven't seen that complete game. We're three and four, Brandon. We got five games left. Do you think we'll ever see it? Or is this a nightmare of a season? Tyler Van Dyke's out. I don't know how long. We got Garcia coming in. They said they said he practiced today. Oh, really? Yeah. But he's not gonna play against UVA. He not? 
No, I don't. I heard he is, but but yeah. so so. <sighs> this is what I was told. Miami won't win another game this season. I mean, yeah, I mean, seems like that. We just got blown out by Duke by twenty four points in football. Right, but we also had eight turnovers. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. like we could have played. We could have played. You know, <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs. If the Kansas City Chiefs got eight turnovers, we win in that game. I don't care how you want to look at it. You know what I mean? Fair. Like. Like Miami Northwestern would have beat the Miami Chiefs if Miami Chiefs got eight turnovers, bro. Like that's just that's unheard of. That's two turnovers a quarter. And the crazy part is, the last five series of the game went interception, f- interception, interception, fumble, fumble, interception. Those are some of the ugliest interceptions I've seen in a while. By the way. Oh, oh, oh my God! Like. And I like Garcia. I like him too, but bro, what were you throwing them? I don't know. I don't think anyone knows. Like, bro, you thought you <laughs> you thought interception where it was not one Miami Hurricane in the picture, not one. Three Duke defenders twice. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Me either. Me either, Paul. I'm trying to figure it out. Like what? Like what are you doing? Like what, what is this? He's starting next week against UVA on the road, and, and and I know, and I and I personally think with a week worth of work, I think he'll come out and look better. I hope so. I just I just don't I just don't see no want to in the in the team. I agree. They're flat every game. There's like no I, I, I don't see nobody who, like, like show me something. Like I, I'm not trying to promote violence. I'm not. I promise you, I'm not. But if one guy, when I was on the field, would have threw the U down or broke the U like they was doing, I'd have punched him in his mouth. Like that's some of the most disrespectful stuff you could ever do. Like yo. Like, and don't nobody say nothing, do nothing. Yo, go get a penalty, bro. I don't give if we losing by we we losing by 21. Game over. It's five minutes to go. Game over. Get a penalty, bro. He about to get hit in the mouth. He threw it. Everybody who threw up to you, threw down to you. They better mouth leave, they better leave with a mouth, a bloody mouth. We're halfway through the show. The people want wings, 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 and we're going to talk about why this football team has no fire. Wings, wings, wings. The best chicken wings outside of the Orlando area off of 452 North Park Avenue, owned by Miami Hurricanes football legend himself, Brandon Merriweather. If you love chicken wings, you're going to love wings, 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 owned by the man himself, NFL veteran, Brandon Merriweather. Got to check it out. Once again, Wings, Wings, Wings off of 452 North Park Avenue in Apopka, Florida. So, Brandon, I got a theory. Hear me out. I got a theory why our players have no fight, no energy. All right? I got a theory. Name me on this football team the best players on this team. Name them to me. Give me like three or top three, top four. Offense, defense, or offense, like offense, defense, special teams, and don't go, don't go off of talent. Go off of what I have this seen season. this year, yeah, this season, not the last season, this year, right now, as a player. I would say Cam. Fair. Uh, number ninety, the one with the two sacks. Mezzabor. Uh, Leonard. Well, he hasn't really played that much. Leonard. Yeah. What you mean? Every time I see it, every time I turn it on, he in the game. All right. Listen, you asked me to put who I think out there. Okay. All right. All right. And, I'm, and, and, I'm going looking at stats right now. And in the receiver young. Okay. So you're not gonna you're not gonna put Lou Headley, no love to, to Headley? Nope. Damn, man, that's rough. That he's the best punter in football. 
I ain't count. I don't ever count upon us. Damn, man. Oh, that's cruel. <laughs> that's cruel. Right. So, Mesador, all right, was he a four star, five star recruit? No, I think he was a transfer. Okay. Kobe Young, that's not, he, he wasn't a three star. Yeah, he, no, was he, was a he was a transfer too. Before he got injured, in my opinion, Restrepo was going to be a big weapon on the offense, and he was our leading receiver, right? I I, I can't agree with that, but, yeah, I, I can see why you say that. So he was a three-star. He got offers from Ivy League schools. You mentioned Leonard Taylor, five-star. Well, I don't think they play enough. I um, agree with that. And Cam Kitchens. Four star. Okay. Basically, the players you mentioned, I thought there was an extra one, but all those players basically, besides Kitchens and Taylor, were three stars. A lot of these players that come into University of Miami during the recruiting, they want the spotlight. They love the spotlight, it's all about them. Then college football hits them, they get some NIL image bills, uh, money come through. Do you think they, they have that fire in them to be successful or the three-star transfer player who's coming from another program who needs to earn for his spot on the team to get playing times wants it more? We should, as a program, recruit football players that fit the right culture for the University of Miami, okay? We'll give it 110%. We call it blue-collar mentality, whatever you want to call it and we'll know the playbook in and out. Those are the guys we have to go after. And those are the guys that beat us from Middle Tennessee State, from Duke as well. Kicked our ass. See, those are the guys we need to recruit. See, you're right. I'm not a big star guy either. I want dogs. I want thugs. I want, I want the people who who you got to get a tutor to get them through school. I want the people who going to cheat on they. I want the people who going to cheat on they tests and plagiarize and do all that. I want thugs. I'm being honest with you. I know you I, You want to lie. I see you want to laugh, but I'm dead serious. I want thugs. I get you want that pit bull mentality. You want to no, 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 no. See, see, you, 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 you getting this. Mistaken. I want the people who are in, in in college in high school. I want the people who are selling dope. Like I want them. Let me tell you why. For one, they got an image to uphold, so they ain't finna let nobody come out here and punk them any kind of way. And then the people like that be more loyal than anybody because. They know they don't want nobody to cross them. So when they say they orange and green, they believe it. They mean it. And third, you ain't got to worry about them getting scared and up in big games. Like, I want the thug. Like, I want the people who going to get kicked out of games. I want them. Because once you hurt, once you harness that and you get them to play as a team, that why you think Alabama is always good? Because they have an elite amount of depth where their backup, where their starter can go down, their backup, their third string can still come in. Every, everybody from Orlando I know that go to Alabama was 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 some form, was a, was one of them dogs. I'm telling you. Every person. And they go to, they go to Alabama and Nick forms them. They get on the team. They get people around them that they say, you know, going to look out for them. They're going to they gonna make sure everybody good. And that's how you keep them. And then them guys go out on the field. They going to punk you. They going to poke you in your face. They might spit on you. They might step on you. You might get a 15-yard hill there, but they going to be there at the end. I will say this, though. The culture at Alabama, they've won so many national titles under Nick Saban that if you as a player are against the coaching staff, the NFL players, the alumni, the upper class are going to say, get the fuck out. Because this guy is doing it the right way. Look at our success. It's it's not 
him, it's you. If you go against Saban, though. Where in Miami, it's like, hey, we've sucked for the past 20 years. Maybe, you know, it's not on me. I could leave. Screw this program. Everyone else has left. Everyone else has failed. It's the program. It's not me. So you have to buy into Alabama, I feel like. If not, you're gone. I think you have to buy in everywhere. Yeah, but at Miami, we haven't done anything. Right. And I don't think that's because. Nothing. We've been awful. I, I agree. I agree. I agree. And, and like, like I got a couple homeboys who watch this show. And everybody keeps saying, Brandon, listen, man, you just got to give it to them raw. And I keep saying, man, I am, but I don't want to give it so raw to where people start jumping off the Mario bandwagon, which people are already doing. I think the momentum and the excitement is dead. I don't think they jumped off per se, if that makes sense. Like, we were excited about Mario, now it's like the honeymoon's over. When? See, that's, and I like what Buddy said right there. It's all about accountability, bro. We ain't got nobody who hold nobody to to nothing. We don't have no accountability out there, bro. Nobody. When the quarterback throw interception, don't nobody say nothing to him. Everybody just walk off and be like, you know, it is what it is. You know, when, when one of the players give up a bomb, don't nobody say nothing to him. They walk off and be like, yo, it is what it is. Everybody... Everybody is so sensitive at Miami to where when they make when they make a mistake, you can't coach them hard or they'll shut down. Like let me sit, let me, I want you to watch something, right? Remember when Mario was at Clemson, I mean at Oregon. Right? Uh one of the guys made a mistake on a punt on a punt return. Right. Mario ripped him. From the numbers all the way to the bench, cussing them out. Rah, 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 rah. You have yet to see Miami him do that in Miami. Have you even seen him yell at somebody in Miami? Cam Kitchens for celebrating uh, interception that got right. called for unsportsmanlike conduct. Right, but you heard what he said about Cam Kitchen, right? No, we expect more from him. Right. He's one of the best players in the nation. We expect more from him. He, We got to put more on him even though he's a young guy. So you expect you coaching him hard because you, you know what he is. You're not coaching him hard because you – like everybody should be getting coached like that. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like even the coaches should be getting coached like that. We haven't seen it yet. We haven't seen coaches point. arguing. That's my point. Like exactly. you don't want, you don't necessarily want to see coaches arguing, but you do want to see Mario make his presence felt. But you know what? You know what, Brandon? I'm going to say something about this coaching staff that pissed me off. I'm going to say something. After we beat Virginia Tech, and that shit was ugly. I don't care if it's a win; it was ugly. Coach Salavea was posting videos, all excited and happy. Coach Feld said, amazing win. Good things take time. We're 1-0. and We're not 1-0. and we're, we're 3-4 and right now. I don't believe that 1-0 and shit. Like, we're starting new. So the coaching staff is happy that we gave up 18 penalties. And then Mario Cristobal said, you know, I just realized we had two of our starters out at receiver. We had two of our offensive linemen out. He's making the excuse about injuries. So something's not clicking here. Something's not clicking here. And he's going to be here for 10 years, so he better get it right. Because we're paying him $8 million a year. And that's a lot of money. Yeah, but I'm sure some contingencies in that. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure we had some contingencies in that. But that's not the point. Like, I, I, I think Mario should be here. Um, I think Mario will get it together. I just, I just want to make sure that that we that we know exactly what being a cane is you know what i mean and i personally don't think we do i don't think i don't think our players 
know what being a cane really means. They don't. They don't. They don't at all. You know what I mean? And I think and I think that's the problem. I think you know it's interesting. You know that there's that Michael Irvin speech he did at the spring game when Al Golden was their head coach. It's a pretty passionate speech if you remember on YouTube. I never seen it. Go you should look it up. It, it's a good speech. You feel that passion from it. He bleeds orange and green. I don't see that with anyone on this roster. I don't see any passionate players like you kind of touched up on. Any leaders. I don't see it at all. At all. And I think it's it's going to take a long time for Miami Hurricanes fans to get what they want. And that's going 10-2 in my opinion. And winning the Coastal. It's going to take a good four to five years. I don't know if it'll take that long. Buckle up. I don't know if it'll take that long. Especially if the quarterback from uh, if the quarterback from Cali. Jaden Rashada. Yeah. If he come in and he look anything like he looked on uh, on them what's his name? On them little YouTube uh, what's the names I done seen? He gonna be all right. He's pretty. He's good. He's very good. You know what I mean. Yeah. So that means if he looked that good, then Jake, my boy. You know what I mean. Some got to give. So Jake, I was big on Jake. I still am, but no, don't get. Listen, I like Jake. I, I like him too. I just, last it just game, I'm gonna I, tell you what it looked like with Jake. It looked like they telling him where to throw the ball. Uh, fair. Like, granted, I hope, I hope and pray that they not. I hope and pray that they not. But it looked like they telling him where to throw the ball. Because that that stutter go comeback that he threw, that he threw the interception where it was none but Duke players there and uh, number eight was like, you know, 10, 15 yards behind him, that play, he looked nowhere else. And it's not like he didn't have time to look nowhere else. Nobody was even around him. The pick six he threw. You had nobody around him. And he threw that over there. And them boys were having a field day. They was like, yo, I got it. I got it. I got it. I'll be honest, Brandon. And I, I we haven't seen Ja'Curry Brown pass the football at all. But if Jake starts pulling that shit he did last week with stupid ass picks, throw him in the game. I think Why you should throw him in the game. I think you should throw him in the game last year, last week. Yeah, like That's I, two quarterbacks. Like you got to I got to see. Like now, now I got to see what he got. Like them that you know, third and one, put him in the game. We gonna run read zone read, and you run somebody over to get one yard. Yeah, I like that. I do. But show me if he Cam knew. We haven't seen him throw yet. That's my point. Yeah. So because they're trying, they trying to set up this whole fucking pop pass shit. Yeah. I'm telling you what they're doing. they trying to say, oh, every time he get in the game, it's a run, guys, so you guys get ready. Oh, nice. Though. Oh, pop pass. No, jump pop pass. That shit going to get picked. Don't throw that stupid ass shit. Get your ass back there and let this man rip that shit up and see if he could do it, period. Why not? We have, we have nothing might. to lose. We have nothing to lose moving forward. Season's my over. Point, my point. We... <laughs> Shit, you can't get no worse. All right, Brandon. Three and four this season has been a shit show. What do you got against UVA before we head out? Listen. listen. And we got Florida State the next week. Listen, I can't can't put us on the losing end of a game. I can't. My pride won't let me do it. My ego stand too tall with this orange and green. Like, I can't do it. So, I'm going to say we pull it out, you know, in a close one. I'm going to say 31 31 30. 31 30 Canes. All right. Yeah. I mean, I'm on the same page. I think it's. <laughs> Low score, low score. They play well when they keep the 
the the score low and the offense on the opponents aren't clicking. I say and, 24 23 Canes. And let me ask you a question. Yeah. Do you do you think uh the last year team would have beat this year team? Same players, just same players, just yeah, I think so. I think so because honestly, like Tyler Van Dyke was just clicking in that offense, and the run game was actually moving a little bit. Like Knighton was playing a lot better. You know, I mean, offensively, you know, we were scoring a lot more efficiently. Like this team, I think Mario, like the locker room and Mario, it's not there. It's not there. So. Say hello. Hello. Say go Kings. Go Kings. I'm don't worry. Mario. Multitasking. Hey Mario, if you listening, I'm bringing you one right now, bro. I'm bringing you one. You know what I mean? You're going to have a dog, because if not, I'm going to knuckle him up for you. I got you. All right, go watch your iPad. Got to love it, man. Go watch your iPad. It'll be like 20 years, but you know, <laughs> we might not be there at this point. It'll know? be 17. It'll be 17, you know? You 17. I, you might not be either. <laughs> oh, actually, actually, yeah, he'll, he'll graduate at 17, so he three now, so it'll be 14 more years. We got it. Let's let's. Ask, let's see after year five. Let's see. <laughs> I might not make it through year five. So, all right. So, questions? Are we going? Are we going to end it right there? If you guys have a question for Brandon, drop in the chat. You got one minute. Go for it, uh, Brandon. What's your overall grade so far? Seven games in. Uh, F. I thought you were gonna say C minus for some reason. No, we fucking suck. Lie. We terrible. <laughs> no, for I real, we, for real, we the second worst team in the ACC. If I will say this, Oregon Mario Cristobal's first year at Oregon, he did go four and eight. I don't care. We still suck. Like you, like I agree. I agree. And I, listen, man, listen. I know it sounds like. I know it sounds like I'm dogging the coaching staff. Hey, I know it seems like I'm dogging the coaching staff, and I and and rightly so they deserve it, but I'm not. Now, as of right now, in this moment, I do not like Gaddis' offense at all, at all. I don't like the fact that we don't blitz at all on defense. And when we do, it's generic as blitz. It's like we got these, you know, nickel blitz. It ain't no, you know, wrap two guys, bring a safety around. You know what I mean? We have no, we have no like game plan blitzes. I find it amazing how third down, twice in the red zone, everybody knew their quarterback was going to drop back. It was going to be a, a design quarterback run. He was going to take off, and he did both times. Every third down, basically, he did. We right. Didn't right, and we didn't we, we didn't, didn't put a spy on him though. But this, that's what I'm saying. We didn't we didn't we didn't put a spy on him. We didn't do we don't we don't have anything that stops a talented quarterback. Like we we don't run. Like, our zones don't even look like zones. Like, we have no zone pressures. We have nothing to confuse the quarterback. Everything the quarterback see is like, all right, well, we're going to drop back and we're going to play. This is what we're going to do. We're just going to beat them man to man. Like, granted, that is great. Yes, that is great. But it's, it only goes so far. You still need something. You know what I mean? You got to be able to throw something in there every now and then. I agree. I agree. It's uh, it's going to be a long process, Brandon. And uh, I can say this, the honeymoon's over at Miami. We got to win football games, and it's unfortunate we spent this much money. Brandon, anything else you got for the good people tuning in tonight? Um, no, man, I ain't got I'm, I'm going to leave my comments to myself. 
All and right. I'm, about to, I'm about to uh cancel my ticket to uh Miami Florida State game, you know. I feel that. I don't blame you. I think it's gonna be ugly. I they're something. actually not bad. Like they're actually a good team, in my opinion. Like they actually fight in close games against good opponents. Like Do you guys think our O line is just not strong enough and soft to get pushed up front? In goal line situations, uh, I think I think our O line is is uh, a work in progress, and the reason I say that is uh, the reason I say that is because every week we got a different guy playing, like. T- a O line group has to gel together, and you can't gel together if every week you got somebody new that you don't trust. So you got to trust the process uh, of the O line. So that's what I think. I think. I think. I don't think it's that they soft. I think it's just that every time, every week, you got somebody different next to you playing. It's hard to do your job. All right. Well, that's it. Brandon, we got to try some Clary Gen Z, man. Oh, I already did. You, but uh, you got, do you do take it during UN football games or just? No, 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 no. I did, it actually, it just, it just came out not too long ago and they sent it to me and I used it. Uh, and honestly, man, it's amazing. I'm all in, man. I got to get my, my Clary, Clary Gen Z tonight. I'm all hey, in. Man, y'all go get it, man. You ain't got the you ain't got the what's name to put back up there. Y'all go get it, man. Go get it. I'm telling right. you, you won't be disappointed. Appreciate everyone. Have a great night. All right, you guys. See ya. Tired of the anxiety, crashes, and jitters while taking Adderall? Then you got to try Clary Gen Z. It is the new, safest, all natural formula to increase maintain and restore energy levels on demand within just 30 minutes you're going to be able to protect against memory decline reduce overwhelming anxiety boost energy levels without crashing and elevate mood and drive it is a hundred percent vegan organic it has been seen on nbc news fox business usa today clary gen z it's the right alternative to focus at work, school, and in life. You gotta try it. Link is in the description below. Gotta try out Clary Gen Z.